Here I have an image. It has a few layers and I'm going to show you how to save it for web. So one of the first things that you want to think about when you're working with an image is the size. We think about the resolution, but more specifically how it looks on the screen and how large it is. So we can find out the exact size by going to image, image size. Here we see that in this case it's 3000 pixels wide. If we were to go down here and double click on the zoom tool, we can double click there and then it will show us the exact size of this image. Way too big for a website. This would take up the whole page and more. So first we want to think about resizing the image before we actually get to the point of saving for web. The neat thing is we can just go back up to image, image size and make it a little bit smaller. Actually a lot smaller in this case. Make sure that this is locked. Normally it will be unless you unlock it and set it to pixels here. Sometimes it might be set to a specific thing like inches or percent. I find pixels to be the most helpful. So in this case, something for web, probably 300 pixels tall, will be about as big as I want to go. And it looks really tiny on that little screen there, but once I click OK, now it has resized this image. So that's pretty easy. It keeps all of our layers intact. Now that I've resized this, and I know that it's the size it will be on my screen because it says 100% up there, I can go to File, Save for Web. Pretty easy so far. Now the Save for Web interface has quite a few different buttons, so we're going to take a look at those. We can look at the original image, which isn't that helpful. We can look at Optimized, and we can look at 2 and 4 up, and basically those allow us to compare things. I usually just use the optimized window. I find it the most useful. The main thing you're going to be using here is the drop down menu right up here at the top. So there's GIF or GIF if you prefer. I still say GIF. And as we know, those only have 256 colors. We can actually reduce the amount of colors here. We can see what happens when we do so. Four colors and now two colors which can be kind of a fun effect, but actually it's probably better just to leave that to 256. Down here it gives us a grid of all of the colors that it has selected. If we want to do JPEG, we do so right there under JPEG. We can adjust the slider then for the quality. If we take the quality all the way down, notice that it makes everything look very muddy. It's compressing quite a bit and taking the quality down with it. So we want to set it somewhere where we can kind of just start to see some quality degradation. I usually just have mine set at 86. You can use these drop downs, but I don't think that they're very helpful. Um, I like to just set that on my own. So then we have PNG 8, which I never really use, and PNG 24. The 24 allows you to use transparency. If you have no transparency on an image, you're probably going to want to go ahead and use JPEG. And the reason being, is typically the file size will be smaller for a compressed JPEG than the same file size as a PNG. We'll get into that a little bit later. Once we've done that, we actually don't have to pay any attention to all of this stuff. We could resize down here if we wanted to, but I like to do that ahead of time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Then I can go ahead and save it to my desktop or my folder or wherever I need it. So let's take a look then at this 4-up display where we can kind of compare things. We can right click over a square and we can zoom in. So let's go to 200 on these. So now we have over here the original image. Right here we have a JPEG. So we can click and highlight one of these squares and then change the settings just for comparison over here. So I could say maybe PNG here. Maybe over here I take this down to JPEG and I take it all the way down to zero. And maybe for this one, I say maximum. So I've clicked on each of these different things, highlighted it, and then changed the setting. You can't really change the setting for the original because it's the original, hence the name. But we can for the others, and now we can better compare these different file settings. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and click on the image and then set it to the one that you want. 